I decided to conduct a special military operation. Whoever would try to stop us and further create threats to our country, to our people, should know that Russia's response will be immediate and lead you to such consequences that you have never faced in your history. Russia intensifying its invasion, increasingly hitting civilian as well as military targets. We now have a situation where people are being killed, where Ukrainian servicemen are dying, where civilians are being bombed, where, where families are fleeing. Once again, Russia hitting civilian sites. More than one million refugees from the country and predict many more are likely to leave as the Russian onslaught continues. These aren't military targets. They are places where civilians work and families live. It's a declaration of war against the whole of Europe. Major all-out military assault by Russia to capture and seemingly subjugate the whole country, the north, the east, the south, and even the west. And Vladimir Putin just does not think that Ukraine is a state. As I'm sure most of you, if not all of you know, Ukraine has been invaded by Russia. There's a full-scale war happening right there. Here we are in Hungary. I'm based in Hungary which is a country bordering Ukraine. I'm currently driving towards the Ukrainian border. Tens of thousands of refugees have already been arriving in Hungary. We've seen them where I live in the south, which is four hours from the border. As I'm sure you can imagine, at the border itself, there's lots of refugees. We've been driving for a few hours, still a few more hundred k's to go. We're gonna go to the border, meet the refugees, hear their stories and try to spread a bit of awareness about the, uh, the atrocities that are happening in that country right now. So let's get on the road, head down the motorway here, and uh, see what happens. A series of reports that there could be effectively a declaration of war to join Russia uh, uh, before uh, this, the, the talks uh, on Monday opened up. Now it would seem any hope for these talks to continue could well be destroyed because Ukraine had specifically asked for an assurance that there would be no development like this, there would be no move from Belarus to actually uh, get its army involved. Really obvious targeting of civilian areas. Uh, and three children were killed, burned to death, according to the mayor of the city. Okay, so we've arrived at Tisabach, which is a small Hungarian town population of only about 13, 1500, but that's drastically changed. You could see on the way here the military presence driving along the motorway, huge convoy of military vehicles. Police presence here is super strict. Had to park the car down the road here. We're walking, it's about 200 meters. We're going to be at the border. They're sending through the refugees in batches. It's quite intense to see a sleepy little Hungarian village like this, which has now been turned into one of the main exits of a humanitarian crisis. We've seen a lot of cars with Ukrainian number plates. All these cars here are Ukrainian number plates. We've seen ambulances going past, some with the sirens on driving really quickly. Obviously, this is nothing at all compared to what's going on on the other side of the border. I have to make that very clear. This is a quite a stable, a very stable place at the moment. Um, on the other side of the border in the west of Ukraine, it's still reasonably stable from my sources there. But obviously, the further east you go, So you can see here, here's the border crossing right there. So that's Ukraine right there. And we've got lots of journalists here. And then we've got an aid station right here, giving out more immediate supplies. Here is when the people come over. You know, some people are traveling across the whole country, 30, 40 hour trips, even longer. Some of them haven't drank water in a long time. They're thirsty, they're hungry, so they need the immediate help. So behind me, a car has just crossed from Ukraine. They've been asking for different sizes of nappies for the kids in the car, water, food, and uh, the uh, local aid station here is just handing them to the car. Then they'll drive further into Hungary. They don't have the bare essentials. No, no. 
This uh, apparently was a huge hot spot in the last few days. Now it's getting a bit more sophisticated and they've moved the main aid station back, which we're gonna go to next. But this whole area here, you can see there's a tent behind me. This was packed with refugees not that long ago. I believe these women here with the bike, they've got a suitcase on there. One of these governmental officers here has just escorted them to the edge of the border zone. And now here they are, a bag. Who knows what they've left? A family, a husband. As males between the ages of 18 and 60 cannot leave the country. Okay, so I just met a journalist. He explained to me that somebody had just come over the border with internal bleeding and was rushed out of here in an ambulance. Obviously, there's still people with pre-existing medical problems. You know, there was a boy that we learned about that's come to Hungary looking for uh, chemotherapy because he was in the middle of his chemotherapy treatment in Kiev and had to get rushed to Hungary because obviously it's being evacuated, right? This is the biggest children's hospital in Ukraine where medics and staff now risk their own lives to care for more than 190 desperately sick kids here. We're inside the main children's hospital, not just for Kiev, but for the entire country. And the reason we're heading down this passage and underground is because that's where the patients, the children, some of whom are on chemotherapy, have been moved for their own safety. I've been based in Hungary on and off for half a decade. And, you know, I travel around the world going to different areas of hardships a lot of the time. And, to see it come here. I just never would have expected it to be right on my doorstep, but uh, that's the reality and nobody saw this coming. This yellow bus here has just come through the border and it's gone down here and they're dropping the refugees off at a local school. 13 year old Vova was badly injured when the family car came under attack. His father and cousin were killed and he now fights for his life. So we've just come into a community hall here and these are all the donations and this is an overflow of donations. I can speak for Hungary. Hungary has really come together and provided so much support for the refugees. So much food here and this is an overflow like I was just saying. So there's other places, first response places and all this food will eventually go there but just since we've been here donors have been showing up depositing so much food. It's, it's really beautiful to see the camaraderie over here in this part of the world at the moment. But the Russians do control children. Chernobyl and the UN's nuclear watchdog groups are raising the alarm that for the first time nuclear facilities are caught in the middle of a modern military conflict. There's another Russia besides Putin's tanks and we extend our hand of friendship to this other Russia. Be assured they have our support. Today said that they are not, they deny that there are any uh, war crimes committed by the Russian troops in uh, Ukraine. Would Putin really use them? He practiced a week ago, overseeing exercises of Russia's strategic deterrence forces. Typically unsubtle hints to America and NATO not to stand in his way over Ukraine. So we've driven another two hours following basically the border north. This is like one of the main train stations that comes from Ukraine. There's a huge group of police up here. Apparently there was a train that arrived here like an hour ago that had a thousand refugees on it. That's what we were told by the journalists at the other border crossing that we just came from. There are some people up here, but there's an extremely heavy police presence. So, you know, I don't want to uh, be interfering or causing a distraction or anything. Got to be obviously respectful. You can see the police presence here. It's uh huge it's very rare in hungary to see this much police presence there's lots of trucks and things and police cars so we've come to the area where the refugees are getting off the train there's a lot of people of all nationalities africans there's some middle easterns that just walk past there ngos trying to organize everybody this is not russia's war this is not a war by the Russian people and the Ukrainian people. This is yet another military adventure, military crime by uh, an unelected, unaccountable, authoritarian and frankly increasingly deranged 
dictator in the Kremlin by the name of Vladimir Putin. To protest in Russia takes a certain amount of courage, as it comes with the likelihood that you'll be detained, often violently. This is St. Petersburg, where they were chanting no to war. An independent monitoring group reported protests in 44 Russian cities on Sunday. Here in Moscow, the police are making it very difficult for people to try and protest. Anyone who so much as lingers in a suspected gathering area is taken away for questioning. A soup kitchen right out the front of the train station here. And what I'm noticing is there's a lot of foreigners here. I think there was around 75,000 students inside of Ukraine when the war started. They've had some problems at the Polish border, so I believe a lot of them have come down here to Hungary and they've been uh, having better luck crossing over here. Okay, so we're outside the train station now. We've met Anan and Hi. Kumar. You guys are from India, from yes, Delhi, yes, right? from India, Delhi. Can you just explain to me the last, you say, five days? Yes. Just, you know, you've been going through a lot of hard times. Can you just explain to us what you've been going through? Uh, you know, the situation in the Kiev is very, very bad. You know, uh, we uh, stayed like four days in the bunker and yesterday we just ran out, you know, uh, there was the curfew just ended yesterday in the morning, eight o'clock. Right. So we walked from like... And before then you had to stay indoors. Yes, you have to be, right. because everywhere was bombarding, everyone was a strike and we are hearing too, ma too many loud sounds. So we need to stay in the bunker and then when the curfew ended, we just walked for 15 kilometers from our bunker to the Vauxhall station, Kyiv. Mm -hmm. And then we took the train and then we are here. We are out. The Ukrainian government announces that every government vehicle is free of cost. So there was no cost for trains, there was no cost for buses and they arranged very good. From Ukraine to Krop, they have arranged a government vehicle for us and it's all free of cost. So they are very supportive for mm -hmm. us and that's how we are here in the Hungary now. And the day after tomorrow, the uh, embassy just inform us that you have flight from the day after tomorrow. So the Indian government's flying yes. you home? Yes, okay. yes, yes. <coughs> At the UN today, the General Assembly condemning Russia's invasion in an historic 141 to 5 vote. Russia isolated with even allies like Cuba and Iran abstaining. So you've been treated well by Hungary so definitely, far? Definitely, definitely. Yeah. We were definitely just uh, given some food stocks at there. Right. And then here you can see there. Yeah, I've seen. It's amazing. The Ukrainian military troops were controlling everything. Like they are not allowing uh, the Russian troops to come back in Kyiv. And I thanks to every government. I thanks to Ukrainian government. I thanks to Hungary. And I thanks to Indian government for evacuating us from like Kyiv to here and then from here to from Hungary to India. Okay. I yeah. love you. Those Indian guys were hiding in the metro stations of Kiev, which were originally made as metro stations, but also doubled as bomb shelters. And now they're being used again in 2022 as bomb shelters. They spent four days in the bomb shelter. They finally come here. Indian government's paid for a flight for them back to India. And of course, they've been through hard times, but they're not the Ukrainians that have had their houses and their families torn apart by this brutal war just across the border. We're very close to the border here. This is the first stop into Hungary if you're coming by train. Hundreds and hundreds of thousands of Ukrainian refugees have entered Europe. Soon it will enter the millions. This could be one of the biggest refugee crises in the world. People are just so upset. I can't keep stressing that. This gentleman is now going to take Amir, two-year-old Amir and his mom, and he's going to take her to the transport area just over there. You're going to go and you're going to try and work out what the next stage is of her journey. Our house was bombed uh, from the air. It was terrible at, uh, and we were very... Uh, it, it was terrible. It was terrible. So you've lost your home. Amir's lost his home. Thank you for speaking to us. It's, I'm, it's again, it's stories like this we're hearing time and time again. If you think about the numbers of people coming, everybody has has fled. The Indian guys were telling me that there were many, many hundreds of people on the train coming from Kiev where they fled from. But a lot of them got off before the train crossed the border. So millions of Ukrainians have moved to the West. And uh, if the war spreads, if it gets unstable in the West, then they'll all come to Europe. So the refugee crisis is really intense. You know, we can't imagine the horror that's going on beyond this border now. People here behind me fleeing. The Ukrainian people are being attacked from the air, from artillery, from ground troops and tanks. But the government has warned for days of Russian saboteurs who've infiltrated the country to bring terror. 
death squads who are attacking civilians in their cars as they flee. They do exist, as we found out. Oh, whoa! Whoa! We think it's a Ukrainian British checkpoint journalists! and a mistake, British! so we identify ourselves. British journalists! 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 Journalista! Somehow we have to get out of this, but the rounds keep coming. It's a professional ambush. The bullets just don't miss. Whoa! Andre! Whoa! Journalist! I'm hit but escape the car and with producer Dominic van Heerden we make our way down the embankment. Where are Camera operator Richie Mockler has taken two rounds to his body armour but is still stuck in the car. He runs for it in a hail of bullets. The five of us have made it out of the car down the embankment and we just can't believe we're alive. I'm going to be speaking with a Ukrainian now who's in Ukraine and he's going to tell us what it's like. He's fled from the east, so he's, he's seen a lot and uh, he's a Ukrainian so he'll be able to give us a better understanding. Just before we go and talk to him, I just want to tell you uh, that I'm going to be doing a fundraiser for this. This is one of the main reasons I came out here today. Try and raise money for people on the ground in Ukraine facing this. We don't really have words for what's going on. I don't think the, the dictionary covers it. It's just beyond words. It's uh, such a brutal act of war and invasion on a sovereign nation. I am doing a fundraiser. I leave the link down below. Please consider donating. I've sourced a trustworthy charity. This will go towards feeding, housing, and giving shelter to women, children, and men going through absolute horror. Young kids, mothers, fathers. If you can find it within you, if you have a bit of spare money, uh, obviously if you don't, no, no problem. I'll leave the link down below, and please feel free to uh, chip in if you can, and it'll go to people on the ground. You know, just imagine one day you wake up and your country's been invaded by a neighboring country and uh, you're forced to flee after you've spent days in a bomb shelter. Okay, so I've arrived home after that day, seeing the border, seeing the refugees. We're gonna have some phone calls now. We're gonna talk to Igor. Igor is a man who some of you might know if you follow my videos. Uh, he's been my Chernobyl tour guide a couple times that I've been to Ukraine. One is a, a man who is in Lviv, who's fled from Kiev. Lviv's in the west, Kiev's in the center. We're gonna get into talking to them now. Hello. 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 Where are you now? On the motorway from Kiev to Odessa. Uh, I have a plan to get uh, to get west, but Odessa is south. I'm not going to Odessa. But uh, on the way from Kiev to west, the uh, road is blocked. Uh, bridges are bombed, uh, destroyed. And there are heavy fighting in there. If I want to uh, commit a suicide, I would uh, choose direct way from um, Kiev to Lviv. Direct way is like suicide. You're leaving Kiev. You stayed there for quite a while, a week or so. What's changed now? Is Kiev too dangerous now? Because you were there during the invasion, right? But what's changed? I was uh, pressed by my family by my friends uh, why I stay here with three kids. You have three children, I've right? Got, everyone is uh, shocked why I'm uh, still in Kiev, you know? Now I'm on the way to west. Uh, it's just so constant start, traffic, right? I, yeah, it's crazy, you know? Right. You see, you see people are leaving. Some, some of them try to, uh, try to use the uh, wrong way. Uh, okay, going on the wrong side of the road. Which is, which is not uh, honest. I don't have a Plashnikov for such people with me. I forgot it. It's good to see you still have your sense of humor. You know, we see on the news lots of things, but uh, I want to know from your first-hand perspective what's going on right now in Kiev, Ukraine. 
I, I guess you be, you know better than me what's going on to Kiev. You can use any news channel what's going on. I get information what's going on in Kiev from the news. And from the distance, I heard sounds of explosion, you know, sometimes anti-missile or anti-aircraft system is working, you know, it creates a huge noise. How does it make you feel that this is happening to your country? How do you feel now that you're running from your home to protect your family? What's going through your mind? It's difficult to explain, you know. I guess uh, humans uh, have some protection in mind from such situation, you know. Such a mess, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, now I understand other people who have such a war, you know. Understand. It's absolutely different when you feel it and when you see on TV or on YouTube. Did you ever think this would happen, let's say two weeks ago? Did you expect the invasion to actually happen? Nobody expected that, actually. But many people saw it. there is a big possibility. If I knew, you know, if I knew, I would, I would sell my house, my car with a good price, you know, mm -hmm. and I would leave the country. You're currently trying to make your way to the West where most people are going, right? And then what's the plan once you get there? There is no uh, any exact plan. I'm going to the West. I don't know if you will really Ukraine or not. There is no any plan. You've got a cat. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got everything in your car, right? You've got your children, you've got your animals, you've got suitcases. There's your daughter there with her, her cat. So that shows the situation. Do you have any last words that you want to share? Last word? Like uh, uh, before... Before... <laughs> well, uh, this is... Uh, <laughs> I wish to, uh, to everyone to have a peace. Peace is good. Beautiful. Yeah, so if you have uh, peace in your country where you now, you have to say thank to God, you have peace. I wish you and your family good luck with everything. Thank you very much. Cool, so we're here with Stas. Stas, can you just tell us your situation, what you've been through in the past nine days, right? All right, hi Nick, uh, hi guys. My situation is, I, I haven't been living in Ukraine like for a while, a few years I'm working abroad, so I came here for a vacation. Even though I knew the situation and maybe some um, some serious issues may happen, no one expected it would be that bad, no one expected that. It would be a real invasion like World War Two or something like that. Actually, I was staying in Kiev with my friends and first they started to shell Kiev airport, the Borispil airport. They dropped a few bombs or rockets. People start to flee out of Kiev. It's just like unbelievable. It's unreal that it happens. I woke up at 4 a.m. from the heavy explosion. I talked to my friends and we decided to go to Lviv. We have a female with us that wanted to leave the country and my friend had a car. So we said, OK, let's bring them to the, West. to the western border. You fled from Kiev to Lviv. Sure. Yeah. And you can't leave the country, right? Because of the rules of men between the age of 18 and 60, is it right? So you're, you're stuck in the country, right? Yeah. Uh, male from 18 to 60 they are not allowed to leave the country and do you have a, a message for the russian military for the russian military i can say one thing uh, the, the demons uh, they will be sent back to hell for the russian people itself please bring the message and spread the message that russia should leave just leave the country that's it like we don't ask for many things we don't need anything from you forget about invading ukraine or trying to enslave ukraine how they did before they they will not make it there's a lot of things i can say sorry i'm shivering even i understand man i i can, I, can I, I can't imagine what you're going through and what you've seen for the people watching i've seen some very brutal videos that you can't really put on the internet of dead bodies and things but can you just describe some of the suffering that's going on in ukraine at the moment and some scenes that you've seen through videos and things and like how brutal is it on the ground in these these battlefields well um, a minute ago i have seen a video from quite close to the kiev i would say like 10 15 kilometers and it is just i don't know it's shocking 
uh, it's shocking to see it. it is 100% shelling of a presidential building. Just a minute ago, uh, this video happened. So uh, I believe they realized they cannot overcome our army. Our army is strong. So they start now to shell the normal people, the civilians, women and kids. And you see the, the fear in the eyes. You understand that it's not anymore like uh, army against the army. It's army against the normal people. So they will be afraid. They will flee out from the country. They would say, okay, we will do anything, take our land, but just don't kill the people. I, I believe that's what they want to achieve, but it will never happen. I'm just so sorry for the Russian soldiers that are uh, young and that will stay and lay down in our earth. I know that you've got much better things to do than to talk to me, so I just want to ask you one last question. Any message you would like to give to the world? And standing together with Ukraine and showing that it is not acceptable, I believe, that the world reaction and our army, they will bring them back to the earth. They will understand sooner or later, better sooner. If you could say one sentence to Putin, what would that sentence be? Well, uh, he's uh, definitely a devil. He's repeating the old mistakes uh, that every empire ever did. You're repeating the same mistakes and you are um, circling the history again. And every step that you're doing now will bring your country to fall. The empire will fall. This will kill him and unfortunately can destroy his country. Thank you very much, Stas, and I know that you've got lots to do and it's an extremely stressful situation. I really wish you all the best, honestly. I, I hope I can give uh, maybe a, a little bit better feedback. My hands will not cheer because I'm I understand outside. that. I mean, I can't imagine yeah, I what you're going through. It's, it's beyond anything that I could ever relate to, so I just wish you guys the best, you know. So, so yeah. far, that's it. <laughs> so, as you can see there, it's a... It's a complete panic on the ground, people fleeing. See Igor there with his kids and you see Stas there. He was with some friends. It's truly shocking what's going on there, speaking to these people and they did not see it coming and they just wake up one day to an invasion. I mean, it's just, I, I have no words as I'm sure anybody who's been seeing the scenes unfolding there, the brutality, the hitting of residential buildings. It's well documented. This is a war against people humanitarian crisis on steroids so i'm gonna leave the link below again it's for red cross ukraine appeal red cross have a good trust rating so the money is going to go to help people on the ground they're there currently working very hard to help people so i'm going to leave that link below five ten dollars can go a very long way and if all of us come together like we have in some of my past videos we've been able to do amazing things this is a very urgent situation it's getting worse by the day it seems there's more and more people displaced more residential buildings bombed, escalating and escalating. Over a million refugees have now come into the European Union. That's gonna keep growing. It's growing every day by tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands. We've got something on our hands. We need to firstly make it known that we will not accept this. And if we can help out a bit here and there with some money, with some donations to help people working on the ground. Ukraine is a, a country I've visited five times. I first went there almost 10 years ago and I've been there many times since and to see this happen it's uh, truly heartbreaking and it, it, it really hits you you know definitely has been a country that I've held very highly and places that I've loved to visit to see it just absolutely destroyed ripped apart you know the architecture not to mention the human tragedy displacement of people refugees deaths of children men and women old people young people you know, yeah, I'm gonna, I'll, uh, I'll leave the video there.